What's up, everybody? You already know this is Mayor Spate, and this is another episode of All Sports All the Time. I got my guy with me, Darvis Anderson, and he is the founder, CEO of Viva Gaming, uh, gaming sports, esports that's going all around the nation, uh, doing tournaments and competing. And you know what? I'm going to let him tell y'all more about it. So, uh, Darvis, introduce yourself. Tell us what's up. What's good, everybody? What's good? Darvis, like you said, good looking. So, what I do is basically play video games. Long story short, we try to help build the bridge between esports, trying to help kids get into college at a collegiate level. If they are in high school, try to get full ride scholarships, part time scholarships, or even just a side hustle within the esports realm. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty good. It's great. That's I got a great up. story how I got into it. So That's you know, it's up. amazing. That's and you brought your boy with you, obviously a teammate, my guy. Tell us who you are and what's popping with you, man. It's good, guys. Uh, my name is Eric Legacy. I'm a professional gamer. And I work with my boy Darvis, a part of Viva Gaming. We try to help, you know, change kids' lives, getting them into college for playing, uh, whether it's any game you really want, but making it a career and a profession. Mm. So more than just playing it at home, but making use of all that time you play your favorite game at home and making a career out of it if you want. So this is all sports all the time, and this is eSports. So first, I'm I'm kind of like, Dive a little bit a different way. So, talk to us about the sport of esports. Okay, let's think about it like literally a basketball team, right? You got your five man team, you got your bench players. We're going to simulate that to like a digital world if you're playing, you know, 2K, which is the basketball simulation. Mm-hmm. You got your five men on the field, right. whether it's the point guard, would be him. The shooting guard might be you. Okay. Small four might be me. <laughs> right. You know, the homie KT might be the center. Right. And, you right. know, the cameraman <laughs> might be the, uh, you know, the small four. You know, all five of us Shout have our webcams. Dark, dark. Literally, small four. we playing all the video games. I got my team, my mic. I'm talking to him. I'm going through plays against another five-man team. So at now the house, got though. 10 people. Literally, at the house, you know, on a collegiate field, which is like at the college. Just or, like, you know, at John C. Smith. At John having C. Having a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. 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 So, so they got teams, and if it's something like two K, where uh, you playing on a park, it's just at your house or at the college or wherever the stadium is. You're still competing against each other all day at wow. your house, literally. That's crazy. You see what these kids do all day? Literally, just be gaming the house on their mic courts all Man, day. Man, all <laughs> day, all day on uh, uh, what's it called? Discord or something. Discord. Like that? <laughs> Yo, pass the ball. He always shooting. You know what I'm saying? All day. So, so is, is, is it the same thing, though, for, like, um, other games, not just 2K? Because that's obviously a sports game. But, like, what about, like, um, um, what's the game? Brawlhalla or, like, those Ooh. type of fighting games like that, like Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat, like Smash Brothers. My boy could talk about it. He a beast on it. Uh, yeah, for Smash Bros in particular, like, bro, like, I'm from Inglewood. You know, <laughs> like, I, I never expected just playing a game at home that randomly I can find a place that a bunch of people are playing this game at. And I'm like 11 years old, walking home with like 150 on me, you know, like, my mom's like, where do you get that money from? I was like, oh, just beat these guys in a game real quick. <laughs> He's like, oh, so you don't need no allowance then. Like, <laughs> right. I guess no more. No, they pay my allowance now, you know. And that's off of Smash Super Bros. Smash Bros. Later. Not 2K, nothing like nah, that. Not 2K. Pikachu, bro. Pikachu. <laughs> Mario. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so, so first, let's see. I want to see. How'd you guys get into like esports? How'd you get into that? Like, how'd you start? How'd you find out that playing video games, something that these students, mm-hmm. I'm not going to call y'all kids, something that these students are already doing at the house anyway. How'd y'all find out that this is something that you could turn into a career and get through college with? Well, the biggest thing that happened was uh, one tournament at my high school, you know, shout out to Parker. I went to Animal South LA, right? So mm-hmm. he would host different tournaments where he would invite all the other different schools around the area. Okay. So I'm in 11th grade and 12th grade, won two championships on a game called Call of Duty Ghost. As Call well as Duty. a game called Tech and Tag Tournament 2. Okay. So we had here get about 16 different schools after school. We'll play for about four or five hours. Then we have little trophies, championship, medallions, free Xboxes. And of course, that's where I got my little scholarship from. Free so. Xboxes? And I was a beast. I was I was crazy. And to be fair, I used to play real sports and basketball, but I had back surgery. So uh, and I was in the hospital literally just gaming for about <laughs> two, three months, doing nothing but playing online. So you know, he, he gave me the intel. Like, so, shout out to Parker. If I never would have met him, I wouldn't even know that esports was a thing. So, That's crazy. he just dropped the game. What about you, E? What's up? Honestly, I, I was into sports in the beginning. I played basketball, ran cross country, played soccer, football. Um, dang, I, I did any sport possible. I was playing. I was on my basketball team in ninth grade. 
And I was always just on the grind with that. And my brother told me about this tournament for Smash Bros. one day. Uh-huh. He's like, you play Smash Bros., right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, I'm not, going, I'm not going to no tournament to play games. Like, I'm going to play basketball whatever. Right, right. And he's like, well, if you win, you get 100 bucks." And I'm like, where is this? <laughs> where is this? Where is this place? <laughs> Where's Activated. This? Show me right now. Show me right now for a hundred. It was, it was on Venice in LA, right mm-hmm. near the beach at, the, at this gaming store. Right. And I went over there, and honestly, how I felt like, like I'm the only black dude there, right? Like, <laughs> no one else is black there. And I just get this sense of like, there's no way anyone that looks like this is going to beat me. Like, <laughs> I just didn't believe it. Like, I don't know where that comes from, but confidence. I I just went over there and I beat everyone <laughs> except the best player in Southern California. He just happened to be there. Just he happened just to be there. Collect the money, you know, like, oh, a uh, hundred bucks pot over here. I'm going to come in, steal the money from all these newbies, you know. But I started talking to dude when I was there and I lost to him and it was kind of close. Our match wasn't too bad. He was, hey, you pretty good. You should go to this next event at UCLA. Uh. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm, I'm looking at the website for it and everything. And there's like 400 people going to this tournament. And I was like, Dang, we just was at a 30 man tournament now, a 400 man tournament. <laughs> That's more money, huh? Right? More money, more <laughs> money. <laughs> I go over there, I get top eight, I make like maybe like 80, 70, 80 bucks. Wow. But still made some money again. And then my, my boy, he won the tournament, the dude that told me about it. And he's like, hey, man, you pretty good. Yo, where you live at? You know, I, was, I live in Inglewood. He's like, hey, I live in Compton. You know, let's have South Side Connection real quick. Like, <laughs> yep. Side West Side like, Connection. Sorry. West Side Connection. Yeah, I was going to say West Edit Side. Edit that out, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do it. None of that. <laughs> and <laughs> So wait, so like, I'm hearing you talk about like, y'all was making money playing video games, tournaments. So, <clears throat> and these different tournaments, talk about those. Like, what is what does an esports tournament look like? Yeah, so um, let's let's talk about when I first started. Um, I was introduced to something called Game Battles, right? So they got more um, apps online, like Players Lounge, um, all these different apps where you can, you know, bet or wager. Mm. But usually a tournament looks like you got a couple people at home, and then you got a rule set. Whether it's even Warzone, the rule set may be, you know, whoever gets the highest kills, the highest points, uh, whoever survived the most brackets, whoever win first or top eight, and mm-hmm. then you compete, right? So when I was doing Call of Duty Game Battles, it will be 3v3. Me and the homies at home, uh, two of them at home, and the other people just playing. And then depending on if we get top or if we win those matches, we get invited to different things around the local or regional area. Or if it's a money match or a pot, we just get that pot. Right. That's crazy. And so crazy. I would add on as well, it's, it's very like most of them are bracket oriented. So like a, like a college like a like, series. Like March where, Madness. Like March All Madness, day. right? All you day. see that bracket? Yeah. Like, you know, there's seeding as well. Seeds one through, how many teams are normally? Eight teams or something? Or 16 teams, whatever, 16, right? 16, 16. They play throughout the season for their seed, right? Clean. And then each player is assigned a seed, depending on their skill level of play, how many events they've won, what's their win record, how many losses do they have. It's all categorized like that as well at a tournament level. But now you're going back to like, 2K and Madden or something like that. Yep. Not this ain't Every Mortal game. Kombat. This Every is Mortal game. Kombat as well. well Smash. The majority of games you would say. Oh, so that could wow. that you could compete. So you got Mortal Kombat. <clears throat> you know, I started off in Mortal Kombat. That's that's when I went to my first tournament as well. I got little how to videos on YouTube on how to play Scorpion in Mortal Kombat 9 and X. Wow. Like, I used to do that in ninth grade. It was just fun. So so talk to me about how as a sport. I can get a scholarship or an esports. Then esports, I can get a scholarship to college. Thousand percent. A thousand percent. Thou- if that's you go on Google right, right now, there, you, that's a lot of you guarantee. You can look at right the there, esports that. programs and just start off with just the basic requirements. All the basic stuff like any sports. Make sure you got your GPA. Make sure you involved in computer science. Make sure you got a field. And then of course they got their own separate one depending on the team. Uh-huh. You know, so say if you're trying to try out for Overwatch, right? You know, have a certain skill rate. A certain, you know, uh, K, K to R rate, win to L ratio, a certain team base. Uh, then, of course, they go over the actual uh, social skills, right? Being able to communicate with a team because you're going to be playing with collegiate people. You got to talk on a mic. What? Being able to talk about the map, understand map awareness, gun awareness, a matchup, frame data. Every game is different, but it's real. This and it just crazy. goes deep, goes deep. Eric, name two scholarships right now that you can get going to college playing esports. Or, um, or websites that you can go to 
to for to help the kids out. It's not for me. I'm not even trying to put you on the spot, but come on now. <laughs> we got I just, you. I just I'm we like, wow, it. this is crazy. Well, I mean, if many colleges yeah. that you apply to have esports programs. Mm-hmm. So ways that we help out kids going to college is help them build a resume of results from going to events. Mm-hmm. There's all kinds of events and online websites that track your stats that these colleges literally look at mm. to determine whether you can be on the esports team or not. And if you're good at just playing the game online at home, like let's say you play 2K online and your win rate is like a thousand and like fifty, you know, like you only win. That's non-stop, a lot of hours. Dub after dub after dub. <laughs> That's a lot of hours. On hey, it's a lot yeah. of hours. Right? <laughs> it happens. But that you you have an in-game rating yeah. in the game. It's called MMR, right? Mm-hmm. It's matchmaker rating. Uh-huh. When your MMR is that high and you can track your MMR, some colleges will accept you on the spot for how good you are at the game. Dang. Because you can just join their team instantly, put them on the map, then make their collegiate team stronger, and more like then they get more people wanting to go to the school because of the strength of the esports team. And it just helps attendance. Wow. So that's just kind of the same thing as like playing football sport, or basketball or something like thing. that. Okay. So it's the same thing like that. So do you think, um, you know, because I wouldn't just tell anybody like, oh, yeah, just go hop out on the field and, you know, start playing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't just tell anybody like, you know, just go out there and hop on the field and start playing football. Like, do you think that um, same with like, Playing football, basketball, running track, like, how do y'all feel about the practice hours? Like, what, what does that look like? So, that's that's the funny thing, right? So, you see us promoted as, like, you know, fun, everybody streaming, everybody making money. Uh, but the hours they put behind the scenes of not even playing online, they're just saying a practice match of perfecting the combo. Most people can't do it. So, that's already one filter, right? So, let's right. presumably say if someone joined a YMCA Growing up through elementary and middle school. Right. You know, someone trying to start out of high school um, thinking that they're going to make it to the league. It's just, it just, it's not impossible. It's but not, the, it's the not. experience and the physicality is just not there yet. They don't have the restraint. They ain't got the discipline. It's a lot of discipline when pros actually are at a, at least at a, a, a professional level, right? So discipline, you got, yes. you got pros like they were saying at John C. Smith, right? Um, the practice that they put in the games just by playing in practice mode and watching videos is already 16 hours. Wow. Right, so that's not even touching a controller, which is watching film and basketball, or watching right, film and football, right, you know right. I mean? going over the plays. Most people can't do that. And then you got practice times, you got scrimmages where you're going to be playing against other teams uh, just to scrimmage and get better, just like basketball, just like football. And then it all becomes on, you know, how consistent you are, oh. right? You know, how many? Are you, what's your uh, Wait, field goal yeah. at the three point line? Is it right. you know three for one, right. or is it six for zero? You know what I mean? Are you you know? 12 for 12, you know, we don't know what it is, you know. Oh, yeah. Pieces, but, That's crazy. You, know? you was practicing like crazy, Eric? Uh, I mean, just for a little history lesson. You know, <laughs> uh, when I when I started, after one year of competing, I traveled all around SoCal competing, and I became number one in the whole Western Hemisphere. Oh, right? snap. And I was number one for five years. Break down Western Hemisphere real quick. All the, the, side, all the states on the Western side of the United States. So California, Nevada, uh, Colorado, Washington, o- Oregon, uh, San Jose. San Anything Colorado. else? Get a map. Okay, we got yeah. it. <laughs> Figure it out, you know. <laughs> and my training regiment was about twelve to sixteen hours a day of practice. Fly to different states where certain like players like stay at to get practice against their play styles and their characters. Wow. It's, it's similar to sports as well, right? Like, yeah. you can play someone that's good at ball, right? And you can understand what they're doing. Right. But then once they start understanding what you understand about their play, they start switching it up. Yeah. You, know? yep. you yeah. need yep. people that iron adapt to you. Iron sharp iron. Yeah. Day. Exactly. Yep. I feel that. I feel that. Because that's right. Because you could go play in the street somewhere and then you adapt to the streets, but they're not playing like that in the gym exactly. or at actual practice. Exactly. I feel that. Wow. So do you think that same, they doing that same thing in college? You know, because like in college, if I'm playing, I'm running track. Matter of fact, we had we was getting up early. You know, you gotta get up early. You gotta you know train before school. You know, is the, you doing the same thing for uh, esports yes. or is it different? Yeah, always, a thousand percent. There's a you have to do workouts as well. There's a physical yeah. side of esports as well. What's, it's a physical side, bro. Break y'all be surprised how, how many break that fit down, people do, bro. bro there's what? so many fit people in this field that y'all wouldn't believe it. Like the mentality, the mental game is. 
there's only so much pieces you can do in chess, right? Mm-hmm. And then it all just becomes mental, right? Uh-huh. That consistency rate, that exercise rate, uh, being able to make sure your controllers uh, are not even controllers, just uh, your thumbs on the controllers or even your wrist just by holding the keyboard, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, neck strength, being able to sit up properly, you know, slouching. All these things matter. Literally, all these things matter. Posture and all Posture, Posture is key. That's good in track, be, too. I remember that. be diagonal when they're playing, bro. Then they try to press down, but you, you pressing diagonal down. Bro. And you wonder why your inputs is wrong. <laughs> no, literally. You got an eight config so, on the spot. So my, uh, my, my track coach, I was running unattached. Shout out to Gary. Um, Gary. He would always say, uh, <clears throat> technique over speed. So do you feel the same way? In esports, like you know, it's, it's, as you're talking about right now, like you're talking about passion and everything, like how how important is the technique? Because I break, I say I say that all the time when it comes to running track, playing football, any stuff. You know, you you break it down technically is correct, but like what's what's up with the technique in esports? I would I would say it's the same as actual sports. It's what separates you from everyone else is the way that you finesse your technique and you merge it with your own play style. Mm-hmm. You know, like you merge it with the fundamentals of the game you already know. Wow, and then you season in your technique. With all the experiences you have, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and in games, it's I would say it's a little easier to get it done because there's not there's nothing too physically demanding. Yeah, like in a sport, <laughs> yes. sometimes you know, like man, I wish I could dunk, but I just, just can't. can't. You, you just ain't tall. Do not, huh? do not, <laughs> you're not jumping over these dudes. There's just no way. You know, there's just no way. But in esports, it's like okay, I can learn that. Yeah, your yeah. imagination is, is a, it could be a superpower. If you use it well enough. Yep. And if we put terms into it, right, let's just say fighter games, right? You have the zoner, you know, then you got the aggressive player, uh-huh. then you got the a swordsman, mm. then you may have the range, then you may have a projectile character, right? It's all different. You may have the running back. That dude may do speed. He may be good at uh, hurling in. He may be good at going around. He may be good right. at juking. Right. You know, every every running back got different play styles. They, they don't all just run for it. No, they, no, they, no, they ain't no. all trunking. Right. And no. they're not all invading. You know, some got a mix. It all right. depends, you know. It depends on your style on your of style, game baby. and your style of on play. Your style, okay, baby. you got to put your own little mojo in it. Oh, uh, what? Season that thing, <laughs> bro. You know I don't saying? know if we should use mojo. Not just like <laughs> <laughs> Don't edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what I was about to say. So, talk to me. You guys play on the team, Viva Gaming. What's up? How did it come about? You founded it. How did it become? How'd you get into the team of it? Talk to me about Viva Gaming, man. Yeah, so in college, um, I started doing more TO instead of uh, playing so much. I started doing more TO, which is tournament organizing, uh, hosting tournament, uh, producing, commentating, uh, getting people for different events, uh, multiple tournaments in a day. And then what I did when I finished school was decided to create my own organization. Except filter it out, right? So let's okay, actually cater okay. it to the students or the future of gaming, right? So okay. not everybody joining my tournament, right. you know, only high schoolers, right? So I'm getting like 50 high schoolers instead of just all these random adults across the world just farming us, you know? Hmm. So then we started off with that, um, started sponsoring a few folks, uh, split payouts. And then, you know, in about two, three years, started, you know, connecting with different schools, um, NCF, you know, shout out. And then now we start uh, hosting on a bigger level to where we're helping, you know, different districts now, creating leagues to where we're bridging that gap straight to college. Wow. Straight to college. So you 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 got your own leagues. You, you said yeah. creating leagues? Fun. That's fun. crazy. It's fun. It's, I, I always imagine literally uh, by being home, just being able to run a station for a couple hours and not leaving my house and being like, yeah, I just made the same amount of money if I was, you know, literally at McDonald's or Fat Burger or, you know, shout out to my first... My first job, Fatberg, you know, I, I had to learn. They not cutting so the check, it. bro. We ain't got to shout them out. They not cutting the check. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was mean. That was rough. Wow. It just teach you how to be ambitious, bro. Ambitious, man. Man. So, tell these kids, Eric, about the opportunities that they have playing, participating in esports. Well, I would say many of the opportunities that you can get from at least trying to compete in a game is some of the lessons you can learn from competing in games, from competing in almost anything, hmm. which is getting to know your surroundings and the people around you a little bit better. Like when you compete in a game and you actually go head to head against people, team up with other people, you learn a lot about how other people think, how they feel, like what they like to do, like like habitually. And mm-hmm. then you can transform that into like understanding more about the work you do in school. Like, mm. like you can convert that into like, man, I really 
I really want to be friends with this person, but I don't know what to do. And you, you play a lot of games where like you don't know the solution to something, so you work your way into like learning that solution. Wow. Games just kind of help you solve problems, and mm-hmm. life is full of problems. Very man, true. Man, man. So, so, Darvis, man. <clears throat> My fool. <laughs> Edit that, though. Darvis, you know, get the next generation some advice, man. All right, brother. Utilize Google. I'm going to drop some websites for y'all right now. If you want to look for tournaments or even host your own tournaments, go to a website called start.gg. Um, you can find a tournament for every single game. Um, every, every seminar, I literally showed them a tournament that my mom participated in. She played Tetris, right? So she loved to play Tetris and Yahtzee. They just had Tetris Worlds in, uh, uh, two months ago in San Jose when we was out there in Oakland. Right, right. Literally. So, you know, examples like that, start.gg. Um, we got Discord now. So everybody that plays video games should be in a Discord or pertaining to the tournament, uh, the style, you know, whether it's online or even just a game that you participate in and get within the community. Like my boy Eric said, it's a big mental game, right? So you want to get to know the crowd first. Um, just like if you're joining any sport, um, you first see the basketball players at lunch. Then it's like, yo, y'all got a basketball team? And then it's like, where we try out? And now you're in a whole different realm. Now you right, right. Adjust. So, you know, start.gg, get on the Discord servers and start waging some matches in like player lounge or even different leagues. But there's, there's plenty of esports programs and opportunities that you guys can look at right now. Or join our server, follow us, make sure to come to our expos. We got infinite information for you guys. They can do all that <clears throat> while in high school? They can do all that watching this video. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, in middle school. In middle school. Our, our top kid, Manny, bro. We met him in sixth grade. Wow. This coach right here got this dude going to tournaments where he's playing against actual adults and so making they, money. So you coaching too? Yes, I do. All right, coach. Coach the next generation real quick. <laughs> Talk to them. How you well, tell them how you coaching all of that? If I'm gonna be honest with you, you know, take everything serious. Mm-hmm. Even if people don't care about what you're doing, if you're passionate about something, try to learn everything about it. Be like, I don't know, be very attentive towards every detail and something that you enjoy, and don't let anyone get in the way of it. Mm. Like my kid Manny, you know, like he started off very stubborn. But once I opened his mind to like, hey, man, like right now we're just playing the game and we're learning about the game. So every day you tell me something new about your experience in this game. Wow. And then sooner or later, he's searching up stuff on his own, doing his own research, like actually learning why he's pressing the buttons he's pressing, understanding his habits more, Mm. and then knowing how to challenge those habits. Mm. Like being frustrated about like, man, I keep doing this. I got to stop doing that. I'm like, that's the answer to everything. Everything. Mm. Stop doing it. Take Constantly control. Constantly adapt. Don't just be a Dorito eating Mountain Dew drinking gamer <laughs> playing games <laughs> like a zombie at home. Play <laughs> to learn something. There's Don't a message a in every box. <laughs> Mountain Dew Dorito chip Don't eating be zombie. Dur- <laughs> <laughs> None of that. <laughs> hey, so uh, what y'all playing on? How can how can I uh, compete? How can we compete with y'all? Maybe it ain't just me. It's people online. How can we compete with y'all? What's up? All right, so look, uh, we got a Discord server. We we got a uh, category for every popular game inside the collegiate field, right? So as far as team games, we got Overwatch and Valorant. As far as fighting games, we got Smash Brothers, Tekken. As far as sports games, we got 2K, right? So join in the server. You can literally compete with the kids we train. We, if y'all want to play us, you got to at least be able to beat the homies. Like, uh, we got sixth graders out here uh, literally uh, defending us. Like, you gotta, there's you gotta there's no way. Final boss. There's no yeah. way. You don't just get to the final boss. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Grab you your badges, bro. So you saying you can't just jump in D1? I mean, you no. could attempt to. That sports term, you, you, you can't can just attempt jump in. To. Exactly. You can't just jump in D1. You got you to gotta start with the, the minor leagues. And you're not going to get to the majors right away. You're going to be down there for oh, a while. Wow. Majors is $2 million tournaments. You're playing oh, against wow. people in Japan and China. You know, you're playing against a lot of people. Indians, Sheesh. Indonesia, so y'all Brazil, gotta practice first. Switzerland. Y'all got to practice first. Practice so. Everywhere. Up, join the Discord. We will give you a link in the description, hopefully. Check it out. QR code right here. And it's simple. Man, esports. I didn't. I bet you I didn't even know or think about esports as a sports. But once again, it's all sports all the time. I'm Mary D. Space sitting here with Darvis and Eric, and I know I learned something. I hope you did too. Let's do it, baby. Thank you. That's. Crazy.